instructionals. <laughs> Today is June 5th, 2017. I'm Joanne Small and my husband William and I are visiting with Miss Flora Robinson in Elizabeth City as part of the Coastal Voices Project. Ms. Flora, thank you for letting us come in to your beautiful home and visit with you. Well, I hope it'll be worthwhile. <laughs> I'm sure it will. And I know you have a large, loving family. Your two sons, Harry and Charlie, come and have lunch with you most days, and they're here with you right now. That's so nice for all of you. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> um, the Coastal Voices Project is, is an oral history project, and there's so many stories that may not have been told. Um, do you, would you like to tell us a little bit about your parents, who they were, where you grew up, and how you had such an early connection to Nags Head? Well, my parents were well, Ida Flora, and she married Harry Johnson. And that's where the Flora name comes in. It was a family name. And that was the cottage at the beach that we spent the summers in in my early days. In fact, I took my first step down there. Your son Harry told me that recently. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, Everett Thompson was over here the other day, and we were discussing the cottages that were down on the beach at that time. And he, he said, of course, it was his father that I was friendly with down there. But Everett said he took his first steps down there too. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> and I thought that Where was, was your cottage? It was next to the Arlington um, the hotel. hotel. I right? ran the corner. Uh -huh. It was known as Miss Cassie's in those old days. Miss Cassie Marsett ran it. How about that? And so I know the Arlington got storm damaged uh -huh. terribly. Was Did your cottage get storm damaged? Well, it's been gone. Uh, <clears throat> it was sold. And um, the last, the, it was in three parts, and the last part of it was used with the Arlington as some, I don't know, game room or something or other. Oh, uh, how interesting, yeah. And but it was all washed away already in the ash Wednesday storm or sometime. I don't really know. Yeah. So you grew up in Elizabeth City but you spent your summers Summer. there. Oh all right. yeah. How Ooh. about telling us about how you got to the beach, how you got to your cottage, <laughs> what you took with you and what what was it like when you were a little girl there? Well, when this modern generation wouldn't go <laughs> we went from on the <clears throat> Trenton, a boat that left here at one o'clock and got an axe head about. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and um, you had to take everything with you. Uh, they even took pony and cart. And I remember one year my mother took a cab because. So you remember your mother took a cow, so y'all would have milk, milk I guess. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you always took a cup of chickens with you. And uh, So did they go on the boat also? Oh, yeah, it was a freight boat. But, um, when, and of course, when you got there, you had no water except a pump. And you had oil lamps at night. And... There were plenty of mosquitoes, <laughs> and, and people spent a lot of time on the beaches in those days. No swimming pools, of course. Of course. And uh, they uh, <clears throat> always had a cook and washwoman and all that thing. And there were some of the native peoples that would come up and do special things, cleaning up, uh, do something. And, I remember those the Ms. Wise that used to come and get some of the clothes to wash. But uh, that's about all, um, as I said, and I, I don't remember the year that, that we 
had running water all the lights. I, I don't remember even when it came. I, that, I bet that was hard when you first got there and you had to get the water running. I, and, and you went had a pump on the back porch, and they kind of did have a big barrel to catch rainwater in that they used. And they had a big wooden ice box on the back porch, and they would put um, half a cake of ice at the time in it. And they came back once a week to deliver ice. So and what about your groceries? Did you have to take a lot of your oh, yeah, groceries yeah. from here, or was there no a, No fresh vegetables. Occasionally a boat would come over from Manio, but as far as, I really don't remember much about the grocery store, stay the honest truth. Well, but, you probably weren't cooking when you were little and, and yeah. had some help to cook. And, yeah, and... Uh, when you left here on the boat, where did you dock? Was it right at Nags Head on the sound side? At the sound side, at where the pier was, and they had um, a big um, cart that you loaded up, platform thing, and you, they'd roll it down the pier to take your stuff in. And, um, and Irene Horowitz was like, <laughs> it's been bad since I can remember, I think. <laughs> but... Um, and you mentioned pony carts. Is is did you get from the boat to your you had cottage? To, had to ride in a horse and cart uh -huh, to do it to get that. And of course, nobody even thought of an automobile. <laughs> and um, was it something that you like when you were here in school and school was getting ready to get out? Were you just so excited and couldn't wait to get to the beach? Yeah, we all. And I can remember when we first come back, <clears throat> we'd come back on the van sky, but it rained on Sundays only from left here at 8 o'clock in the morning, went to the beach, and then came back and got here about 9 o'clock. I remember how green everything looked when I got here, because in those days, you had sand. It wasn't covered <laughs> like it is now. It was that is sand. one huge change, uh -huh. isn't it? Uh -huh. How about yeah, that? Yeah, Nags Head's ru ruined. There's not, nothing down that appeals to me now. It just hurt, hurts me to see those old cottages built on 50-foot lots. And, you know, uh, it and, has changed a lot, hasn't it? And, and landscaping. It used to be wonderful to go and not have to worry about a yard, but now... <laughs> I am with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... So when you went to Nags Head in the summer and you stayed at your stayed. floor family cottage, we did stayed. you go other places? Did you go to Hatteras? Or oh, good night, no. And there, only, there were no telephones, of course. The only communications were at the life station and uh, Coast Guard, they call them. <laughs> and uh, I can remember one time they came up and told my mother, she better close the blinds that the barometer was falling. And she didn't know what a barometer was. <laughs> was a hurricane coming? A hurricane storm was Were y'all there during that Oh, work? yeah. Oh, yeah. You didn't get away. You stayed. No way to get away. Do you remember if you were scared? or No. Just, you just didn't no. have enough no. weather information <laughs> to be scared, did you? No. But... Uh, and then when I got older, when I was at uh, 10, 11, or 12, I went away to summer camp up in, I was the only southern girl up in this <laughs> camp in Lake Chautauqua in New York. And so I met, I, there was a lapse in there with them. But um, I reckon when I got back, they had, <laughs> Modernized them. I don't know. I don't remember dating them. Were, were you excited about going to camp instead of the beach just because it was something different, I guess? Yeah, well, it was entirely different, of course. And, uh, and I remember one year, Phyllis Macmull and Dixon went with me. So, of course, her mother wanted to go to California to visit her. Phyllis is older, oldest brother right there, so she sent him to camp with me. <laughs> and uh, so um, 
or when you were in Nags Head for the whole summers that you remember, did you go to church? Yeah, but okay, yeah, but, but it was a little Episcopal church over there, and Dr. Drain, of course, had this service, and he uh, would go down on the beach, and he'd be all in black, this black suit and all, and, and we'd all make fun of the way he would look to get going to the ocean, because, you know, he was nothing, <laughs> um, it, he was pretty well covered in black. He saw looked like a ghost walking down there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the drain cottage was uh, on the other side of the Arlington from us. Uh -huh. And, uh, of course, we were just a couple of cottages from the, well, just Martha Outlaw's cottage was next to us. And then the old Outlaw cottage, which uh, is still just like it was, Exactly. Was there. Yeah. And uh, then there were two other cottages. They called them the Worthington Cottage. Miss Worthington was uh, an outlaw, and I guess she fell out of some of that property, something I don't know. But they had built two. They lived in one and rented the other one. And then the Thompson Cottage was down there at the end all by itself, really. But um, that was about the end of what was on the south end of the beach in those days. Right. So your beach neighbors, you all visited each other. Yeah, we all went down the beach together and went swimming together, you know. And um, Do you remember your parents entertaining the neighbors, or <laughs> was it just all play on the beach? Yeah, well, I, I really don't remember any big parties. They might have had some. <laughs> I don't remember them. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it was. And, I, I and there, there are some pictures in that book of I when I was real small down at the beach. And, and a group of us all posing out on the beach and all that kind of stuff. But well, I'm thinking since you didn't have air conditioning, since mosquitoes were bad, there was no mosquito control, I'm sure. No. No. So you Most. probably stayed on the beach until close to dark, and then you oh. might have just gone to bed when it got dark. No. We'd <laughs> come in and get dressed and walk over and meet the boat every afternoon and pick up what mail would come in there. But Mr. Hall, they say it was slow going up because he read every postcard that came in. <laughs> but anyway, we pick up the mail, and if somebody strange got off the boat, you wonder what they were doing and where they were going. And um, no, we went in the ocean in the morning, then afternoon, and then occasionally we go out and take a dip for breakfast but not every day but and they put mosquito nettings over the beds to keep the mosquitoes out uh -huh. of course we did have screens <laughs> and but um it was a different world i tell you yeah so uh, do you remember if, if if somebody got hurt, was there any medical care, any doctors or nurses? No, no. Uh, I, I remember my mother had an attack of uh, kidney colic, and <clears throat> she had to wait for the tent Trenton, because she brought me to town well, uh, to come in that morning to get up town to the doctor. That was uh, so you just had to be really tough. Yeah. <laughs> what about, um, do you remember when you were a child at that cottage, any favorite meals? Did you eat a lot of fish? Did y'all surf fish or uh, well, uh, buy fish? I, I can remember they'd pull the net and the cook would go down and get fresh spots and cook them for breakfast. And, Yum. And, um. I really don't remember what we ate, to tell you the truth. <laughs> but uh, there's somebody up in uh, the Kitty Hawk area that occasionally would kill 
a pig or something, and he'd uh, come around to sell parts of it. And uh, that was a great occasion to get some fresh meat, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but, um, the. So. I, I ran out of what went on, I took for granted it. <laughs> It's just a regular routine. and Exactly. It's the way it was for you. And yeah, yeah. Didn't know any other, uh -huh, uh -huh. other way. Uh -huh. Well, what about when you grew up, you went away to school, you came back? How'd you meet your husband? Well, I grew up down there and he grew up up here. <laughs> and, well, we had gone to church together and I... I and... Uh, so did so then after you lost the Flora cottage or you sold the Flora cottage, it was sold and then y'all had another cottage and you no, raised your children. No, uh, we I well it was some years I didn't go to the beach, but uh, then when I started dating Charles and we got married, I went down to the I would go and stay with his mother some during the war times and we'd have to pull all the curtains and everything, you know, no lights at night and that kind of stuff. Did you stay there all summer or during the no, war years? I, I, she did, but I, I would go and come. And, uh, but uh, then after she died, we would go and split it up with C.H.'s family and uh -huh. I'd stay a month and he and then they stay. I stay in June. They stay in July, and then they come back for August. Mm -hmm. uh, the boys went to Seagull. They and Alan Fulman, which <laughs> makes me think about it. Uh, they all went to Seagull mm -hmm. during the summer. Well, going back to the war years, were you ever scared staying there when no. you had to pull the blinds? <laughs> no. no, I never thought anything back, to tell you the truth. But uh, I didn't think we were in danger. Right, right. And, uh, it wasn't close enough, really. No. I remember one time we did see something burning way out in the ocean. You could see it at night, see it burning. Yeah. But... Uh, I, I never heard him shoot <laughs> uh, anything. But and by that time, how was your transportation getting there? Oh, well, we drove. And of course, the, well, when <clears throat> you started driving, you had to drive to Point Harbor and get a ferry and, and then go get off at Kitty Hawk and go through the woods and then get out in the sand and sometimes. <laughs> You got along real well, and other times you didn't get it. You started pushing <laughs> and uh, let the air out of your towels. And, uh, it wasn't easy <laughs> yet, I'll tell you. You had to really want to go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, then, of course, they built the bridge and started improving the roads and so forth. And I remember when they first had the wooden bridge, it cost a quarter to go across. And we'd come, a group would come down from Chapel Hill to go down to the beach, and we'd all have to be sure we could get a quarter together <laughs> to get across the bridge. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that was some time. And now you say it's ruined now. It's just completely ruined. I know you don't go back much in re in these recent years, but you have been just I the went, other day. Yeah, I went to Skibble's celebration there mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I've lost all my landmarks. I have no idea where I am. <laughs> we have two. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot and, of them gone. Do you remember when the casino was built? When the casino. When the casino, when it first oh, opened. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We used to go to the casino, and uh, they had a bowling alley downstairs and dance all upstairs, and they had old Asa 
He was the character down at the beach that was just a little off balance. Dumbest thing he ever saw. He worked at the bowling alley and he'd say, I don't understand this. You all tell me to set them up and then you knock them right back down. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, they da had dancing upstairs. Sometimes they'd have good music and sometimes not. And then later, they used to have tea dances down at the, um, oh, what do you call it? The, um, and they're close to the Nags Head uh, um, on Sunday afternoon. We'd dress up and go down there and have a tea dance. At the at the Nax Hatter Hotel. No, it was a um a building. Carolina. Hmm. The beach Carolina. club. What was it now? What do you call the beach club? Yeah, the beach club. Uh huh. Uh huh. And they'd say, "Take your shoes off before you go in." <laughs> but of course, you didn't have to. But uh, that was a Sunday afternoon affair. Do you remember any other uh, characters that you enjoyed when you were at the beach? Any uh, people that you saw every summer? Well, I remember the old outlaw cottage down there, <coughs> the one still standing. They had a separate little house. They had a, a black man for a cook and he was could tell you some stories you know <laughs> but uh, old Ra Ralph I think was his name something but anyway no not really but I uh, Miss Maddie Midget I remember when they were over on the same side and uh they moved to the ocean side. Have you been in what used to be her store or Nellie Murray? Yeah, it's a museum. No, right, I, the Beachcomber Museum. I mean, no, I haven't been in that. That is a pretty fascinating place. Uh -huh. I mean, it's very oh, small. I remember one adult, what was the name? Used to look all the time on the beach for things. Nellie Myrtle. Nellie, Nellie Myrtle. Myrtle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't remember that she, they had moved to the beach then, of course. They say she walked on the beach every morning and every afternoon, mm -hmm. and everything she picked up is in that beach cutter <laughs> museum. I think it's run by volunteers now, but you uh, would enjoy seeing all that. It's yeah. an unbelievable amount of beach glass. Uh, well, and they could find pretty glass in all in those days. So it's all, it's all plastic now. <laughs> it's hard to find. Um, what about? Do you remember when you were a little girl on the beach in Nags Head? Did you get tar on your feet a lot? Oh yeah, had a, a kerosene thing on the back steps. You cleaned your feet before you went there. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Certainly do. Maybe that's one of the few improvements now that we don't get a lot of tar on the beach anymore. Yeah, I reckon so. I don't even know where it came from, but anyway, the ships or something must have dumped something that day. I think so. But the, I don't, I'm sure they don't do it now, but... They used to set nets out in the ocean, you know, and pull them in in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Were there any any other memories that you have that you think about sometimes? Well, we used to have marshmallow roast down on the beach. You'd get all your friends together and have a marshmallow roast. That was a big occasion. <laughs> and... Uh, I think now you have to get a fire permit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, I know you have a large, loving family, your two sons here, and their wives who live right here so close to you. I'm thankful for that. Five grandchildren. I don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
the last, at least the last one or two birthdays, you've celebrated with uh, great grandchildren. Oh yeah, those yeah. darling great grandchildren. I have three. I found now, but <laughs> they are so precious. Yeah, the baby's well, growing. Of course, me. when we had the old Florida cottage, Virginia Hall was always down there with us, and uh, and they, and she and my mother had three brothers, and and one of them married Janie Flora, and. Uh, they lived, would come down there for a while, and then Janie got her own cottage, the Hunt Cottage, the Janie Hunt, she was. Okay. And, uh, I know a lot of these are familiar names. I'm sure we know some of their yeah, children and grandchildren. Hunt, and, of course, I remember the, the lost colony. My uh, daddy was very friendly with the midges. They used to be down at Rodanthia somewhere, and he went down there hunting. And, uh, of course, they say the uh, Muther, uh, not the lost colony, the first, first colony, that's what I'm First saying. colony in. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, my uncle was mayor of Elizabeth City when Roosevelt came to go see the lost colony. And, uh, of course, he rode with him, and they all went to the Buchanan Cottage, of course, as you know. But, uh, well, fast so, forward a little bit. I, I enjoyed many an uh, afternoon on your porch surfing with, with Harry <laughs> out there right back. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of them surfing? <laughs> uh, they didn't bother me. Uh, they used to go out and uh, had a little old sailfish, the sunfish. And they go out. It was it a sunfish or that one? Sailfish. Sailfish. And 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 I remember, uh, Barbara and all lived next door to us. And one time she was off with us, and my mother got so upset as because we hadn't seen them for a while. And I said, Oh, they probably went to Virginia Beach to get a Coca Cola. And she <laughs> said, How can you be so? <laughs> So uncaring about them being out in the ocean, I never ever gotten that. <laughs> but uh, they had some big times down there. Yep. Well, and and we had old Mary Sutton that went and stayed all summer with Brother Swallow the band and cooked, and she. she and did what these boys wanted to do already. Cook things. But uh, it's so changed. Uh, <laughs> I know it has. As I say it, it just breaks my heart to see those row houses lined up there, you know, just like. Uh, all of these Cape Cod or some of those places where they've just outgrown themselves as far as I'm concerned. Well, I guess it's just such a beautiful place. There's so many people that want to be there yeah. and love it. But luckily, a lot of the old cottages in Nags Head are still there. Yeah, yeah. And the first colony in was moved. Uh -huh. and, oh, yeah, uh, they preserved it. Just and beautiful, of beautiful. Of course, it was at a wedding over there couple of weeks ago. Yep, we were right there with them, yeah. cutting uh, yeah. the rug. <laughs> so that was fun. Well, you are just a treasure, and you are just so sweet and kind to let us come in. And well, I don't know that I've told you anything that nobody knows. Well, it's but, important that it's coming from you, and it's your memories. Well, uh, and there's some pictures in that book of me down at the beach. That, I do want to see that. And, uh, Which one is it? It was, um, this one. Uh huh. Julie's gone. I don't know how much time getting that thing together. But, um, well, it's a beautiful picture of you on the front. <laughs> it's that pretty dress. <laughs> no, I, don't know. I wouldn't say that, but anyway, that's the way it was. It's a beautiful memory book, and uh, your daughter in law did this for you for See, you. See, that's it, Nags Head. And look at that bonnet. That's on the back of the back of the uh, floral cottage. 
they call it the front man. <laughs> uh, the OSHA was always the front man. I, oh. I was down there. Well, you have a lot of beach pictures in here. Uh -huh. And so Virginia Flora Hall was your uh, cousin, right? No, aunt. 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 Uh -huh. aunt. Okay. Skipper was my cousin. Okay. See, that is the way we get on the beach on all of us together. And just really sweet bathing suits. Yeah. Were they real heavy? Were they the material? Well, uh, not particularly. No, not really. Of course, they cover you up. <laughs> they don't do that nowadays. <laughs> it's not interesting anymore. <laughs> And the bathing caps. Oh, we all wore bathing caps. Yeah, we always wore bathing caps. And great big bows. Uh-huh. Great big bows. Uh, you don't have to struggle. Now, is, is, this, is this a doll baby or is this a 1917? Uh... Looks like a child is pulling another one Maybe toward the ocean. That, that might be my brother. I don't know. That's really sweet. Well, thank you for letting us come. I'm going to glance more at the book, and I might take a picture uh, uh, to uh, add to see, the Coastal oh, Voices. That's on the back steps down there. Yeah. None of those cottages were ever painted, were they? No, no. And Mr. Klein, I can remember the floor cottage being moved back. And uh, it was in three sections. <clears throat> We'd have to go from the living room down the steps and up steps to get to the dining room while he was in the process of moving it. Well, this is just a beautiful book. It is. I can't imagine anybody having enough patience to find all those <laughs> pictures and do it. Well, that's one of the improvements in the last hundred years, uh, all this technology yeah, that I'm can... print the pictures and all. Print the pictures uh -huh. and make books. Uh -huh. But you know what? We haven't, we haven't told the Coast of Voices um, interview... Um, your birth date. <laughs> My birth date. Uh huh. They uh, they don't know your September age. September the seventeenth, nineteen fourteen. I'm a hundred and two, pushing a hundred and three. <laughs> How about that? Uh -huh. Well, you're the most beautiful hundred and two year old I've ever talked to, and definitely the sharpest. <laughs> But thank you so much for participating. Well, you know, and I, I hope it, it helps you do something. I don't know what. Uh, well, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy listening to your stories, and uh, we'll make sure that you um, that your son show you. Uh, well, tell them about uh, one of the storms where y'all had to wait. In 1933. Oh, I wasn't there. Your mother was. Uh, my mother was there with two dogs in Virginia Hall and John Hall were down there. And they went over on the same side. My mother stayed because she wouldn't leave the dogs. <laughs> so y'all were dog lovers from way back. <laughs> <laughs> but but she, I mean, she fared better than they did. They had to wade through water and everything. But... <laughs> Anyway, no, there's been a lot of hurricanes down there. And, of course, Ash Wednesday, I took a call of, of boys down there to see what had happened to the Robinson Cottage. And, and they found out they were giving away ice cream up at Ms. Mitchell's. What, 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 what the name was? Jaycox. <laughs> No, it wasn't. I know, Miller's. Miller's, yeah. Miller's, yeah, they'll give away ice cream up there at Miller's. And they left me, I was just stranded, and nobody <laughs> <laughs> was laying to do anything. Didn't have any electricity. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, had to eat ice cream. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, know. do you have a very favorite memory from 
just your lifetime, anything from the beach that just, uh, it was all good, I guess. Yeah. Everything was, was a good memory. Yeah. I remember one time I was down at, Virginia, at uh, Janie Hunt's, Janie Flores College with her daughter, Baby Jane, and the hurricane, they announced the hurricane was coming. And she insisted, and I was the one with the car down there, she insisted that we get in the car and drive up here midnight. <laughs> and I think we went through the worst of it on the road, oh, <laughs> trying to get up here. I never will forget that night. <laughs> but anyway, we made it. <laughs> you are very brave to leave in a storm and drive in the middle of the night, well, especially with a baby in the car. Gosh. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, I can't remember that. <laughs> uh -huh. but, uh, Tell them about your graduation at Carolina, Mama. That's always interesting. I know it doesn't have to do with the beach. But. <laughs> well, I uh, I went to St. Mary's for two years, and then I transferred to Carolina my junior year. And I graduated. I was up there in 33 and graduated in 35. And... Eleanor Roosevelt spoke for the graduation, and Governor Ehrenhaus gave me my certificate. And of course, he had a few words to say and hug me, and so a little bit, but hadn't seen me grow up, you know. Really? But uh, that was it. <laughs> Very historical. Yeah, and yeah, it was historical. There were 300 girls and 3,000 boys. <laughs> And now the girls way outnumber the boys. <laughs>